Kolmogorov complexity using prologue. So this is number four in the Deconstructing Dembski series, but it also is like episode number one in a standalone series on uh, Kolmogorov complexity. Even if you're not interested in Dembski's book, this uh, mini-series may be of independent interest to you. All right, our three heroes for this uh, course are Ray Solomonov, Gregory Kaiden, and Andrei Kolmogorov. Okay, all three of these guys actually invented the same theory that we're going to talk about here. Solomonov was actually the first one, and then later Kaiten and Kolmogorov um, invented it about the same time. So why is it called Kolmogorov complexity? Well, uh, as you can see, Kolmogorov is the only one who actually has hair here, right? So um, this is just another example of uh, us bald guys getting the short end of the stick. <laughs> Now, there's no way around it. If you want to know about Kolmogorov complexity, you have to know about computer programming. But don't be scared. I'll make the on-ramp as easy as possible. Uh, Gregory Kitan actually invented this whole thing while he was in high school. He's a super genius, right? Uh, so, But it is hard, but it's not impossible, okay? So, why prologue? Okay, so those of you who haven't heard of prologue are really puzzled right now. Those of you who have heard of Prologue are probably cursing, <laughs> but uh, there are good reasons. Okay, to gain a full understanding of the issues surrounding Dembski's book here, you'll have to know two things, first order logic and computer programming. Now, Prologue is a programming language which is based on first order logic. Actually, it's short for programming and logic, surprise, surprise. So you only have to learn one hairy thing. You learn this and you kill two birds with one stone, right? So step number one, um, let's go download a version of Prolog. The version of Prolog that we're going to be using in this course is SWI Prolog. It's the most beginner friendly and it has a really nice integrated development. Okay, to download SWI Prolog, uh, just take your web browser, which of course is pointing to Randy Helzerman's channel, um, and uh, go to this URL, swi-prolog.org. And then come down here to the sidebar where it says download click on download and then go over to stable release click on stable release and you'll see a whole bunch of different uh, options here if you're really cool and use Linux you can click on this one uh, most everybody will probably be using uh, Microsoft Windows so click on this one or if you're like me and uh, use uh, Mac OS they've got several versions for Mac OS here so whichever operating system you're using pick that one double click on the link and it will download a self-extracting executable. Uh, once it's downloaded, just double click on that and it should install it for you. On to step number two. Now that you've got it installed, uh, let's launch it and get familiar with it. So, back over at the terminal. Okay, the first thing you need to do uh, after it's installed, it's going to dump the executable someplace in your hard drive. Now, if you're on Windows, uh, just go to your start button and navigate down through your programs path down to SWIPL and you can find it there but if you're on Mac like I am it's easy to find just type in SWIPL in your little search box here and the executable will come up this is the guy right so just double click on it and uh, let me uh, resize it here so it uh, fits in the screen so this is uh, Prolog's command line so you notice it prints out a whole bunch of boilerplate here so forget about that Though what's really interesting is this. This is the prolog prompt, question mark, dash. And here's how it works. It gives you this prompt, and it says, which basically lets it know that it's ready for you to do something, right? So let's, let's treat it like a calculator here. So you type something, x is 5 plus 7, period. Oh, and by the way, every, everything you tell prolog is going to end with a period here, right? So this is like an English sentence. And then you type return. Prolog thinks about it and spits out the result. X is equal to 12. 12 is 5 plus 7, right? So um, that's basically how the command line works. Now, let me tell you the most important thing to know about the command line is what to do if it, you kind of screw up. If you make something that like doesn't look right, something like this maybe, uh, you know, the command line will go into this funky state. So to get out of it, just keep typing period until you get back to this this thing again, okay? Now, no harm, no foul, it tells you you screwed up, but we're back to uh, accepting the input again, right? Next is one plus one, okay? So, um, this illustrates one of the first concepts here. This thing, x is a variable. Variables in Prolog, they all start with uppercase. So, x would be a variable, uppercase y would be a variable, um, 
but you can make it multiple words like this. You could say something like this. This is a variable. Okay? Is one plus one. Right? So you can separate them out with like little underscores here. As long as it starts with a capital letter, then it is a variable in Prolog. Okay, now what do, they, what do these variables do? Variables are actually really misnamed. The one thing a variable doesn't do in Prolog, it doesn't vary, okay? Once you set it, it's set. So let me illustrate that. So let's set x is uh, 1 here, okay? And then I'll do a comma. So this is like English sentences you're typing out here, right? So we can type on a different sentence here. So you can say, now we say x is 2. And it's going to say, no, that doesn't work. Once you've assigned x to something, it stays 1. Until you hit the, the period, right? So I can say x is 2 here, just fine. And I can say x is 1. Prolog has, like, hyper attention deficit disorder. Uh, it only remembers until you hit that period, and then, it, the, and then it forgets, right? So let me give you another example, like x is 1 plus 1. And then we can say y is 2 times x, all right? So here, it remembered the value of the x. It didn't let you change it but it lets you change y because you haven't set it yet. That's how it works, okay? So now let's do something fun. Uh, just for, let me show you what else these uh, variable thingies can do here. Um, just for fun, let's type in this. This is gonna look mysterious, but just take it on faith right now. So I'll say use module library. Yes, looks very mysterious, don't worry. PR like this, okay? Now, what this lets you do, this is a this loads a program which lets you, you, you like kind of solve equations. So to use this one, everything has to be inside these bracket thingies. But but here's how it works. Let me show you. Say I say two times x equals two. Well, what does x have to be? Obviously, x has to be one here. Okay. Now this shows something else that the command line can do. Sometimes instead of going right back to the prompt. Prolog will just kind of wait for you to type something else. I'll explain more about this later, but for right now, just if it ever does this, just hit return, and you'll get back to the command line again, okay? So using this feature, you can actually solve equations uh, using Prolog here, but you can do uh, more interesting stuff. You can solve, solve any linear equation. Uh, say x plus y equals 1 plus y, or x minus y equals 1, say x plus y equals 2. Oops. I mistyped. And uh, it actually solves two for two equations and two unknowns like this. Right? So that's pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, 2 times x plus y. You get, uh, you, you get the picture here. Right? So Prolog is pretty cool. It's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. So for your first homework, uh, I'll, I'll just have you download it and... Um, and play around with it a little bit. So please join me back over at the chalkboard. Okay, homework set number three, and this is actually homework set number one for the mini series Kolmogorov complexity using Prolog. All right, question number one, uh, task number one, actually, really. So download and install SWI Prolog yourself, and uh, just to make sure that you've got it installed correctly, you know, launch the program, and at the prompt, type in this trace. Okay. And hit a uh, hit a period sign. See, and then tell tell me what does SWI prolog print out here? It's, it's a little uh, Easter egg. Okay, so question number two: Use SWI prolog to solve these sets of equations. All right, so these two linear sets of equations. These are two equations and two unknowns. And solve it, and just cut and paste your logs into YouTube's mail and send it to me. And the next uh, right. one, we'll actually get to using some more. Uh, coolness of Prolog, and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about programming in Prolog. Thanks a lot.